Hello everyone, Wolfring here. Uh, so today we're gonna uh, have a special episode to just uh, uh, show a brief proof of Euler's theorem. Um, again, let's recap uh, the theorem itself. Um, it is also called Euler's totient theorem. So uh, we have if A and N are co-prime to, to one the other, then uh, A to the degree of phi N is congruent to one modulo N where phi n represents the number of integers in a set of 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1, that is co-prime to n. Phi n has another name as the Euler's totient function. That's why this theorem is called a totient theorem. And phi n has a closed form as n times the product of 1 minus 1 over p, where p is all the unique prime factors of n. Okay, uh, so before we prove that, uh, we're actually going to do two things. One is that we're going to prove this uh, theorem. Um, and we notice we actually can prove this even without uh, the closed form of phi n. But uh, for completeness, we also will show that why phi n has this closed form. So we're going to do two things. But before we do that, we're going to show some examples. For example, if we want to know the last two digits, digits of 7 to the degree of 802. So basically, uh, we want to calculate this number modulo 100. Okay? Notice that um, 100 is co-prime to 7, so we can apply uh, the Euler's totient uh, theorem directly. So uh, first, we need to calculate phi 100. Notice that 100 equals to 2 squared times 5 squared. So phi 100 by its closed form is 100 times 1 minus 1 over 2 times 1 minus 1 over 5, and it equals to 40, which means uh, 7 to the degree of 40 is congruent to 1 modulo 100. So we just need to divide uh, the uh, um, Exponential index, which is 802 by 40, and the remainder here is 2. So this whole expression is uh, congruent to 7 square, which is 49 modulo 100, which means the last two digits of this expression is 49, 5, 9, uh, it's 4, 9. Okay, so in general, what we can do is that for any satisfying a and n, uh, we can first, so if we want to evaluate a to the degree of k modulo n, what we can do is first calculate k to uh, modulo uh, phi n. If we get k is congruent to k prime modulo phi n, then the original uh, expression a to the degree of k is congruent to a to the degree of k prime modulo n. Okay, so this is exactly what we've done here. Now next, we're going to look at a uh, brief proof of Euler's theorem. So the idea here is that we're going to construct a set uh, that contains this phi n elements that are co-prime to n. And then we, similar to uh, how we prove Fermat's little theorem, we're going to time each element with uh, arbitrary uh, integer a. And then uh, what we want to show is that the whole set, those two sets are uh, equivalent uh, after modulo n. This means that uh, those two are just uh, uh, a permutation uh, of one the other. Then we can just times all the elements in those two sets, and then it should give us uh, the uh, um, congruence modulo n relationship we're looking for. So let's do that. So first, let's construct the S. So everything, uh, all the elements in S is uh, co-prime to N. Then we just times A to each element. We get AS equals to this. Um, then we want to evaluate the modulo N of every element in AS. Now let's use a inverse. Um, assume that two of them has the same um, are, are congruent to one the other, modulo n. Let's just say S and T are equivalent. 
So basically, this means for S and T belongs to S, S A is congruent to T A modulo N. Because A is co-prime to N, uh, then we can get rid of A on both sides. So we can get S is congruent to T modulo N. This means that uh, because S and T both belong to the a set of S, means S has two elements that are congruent to one the other modulo N, which is a con um, contradiction because we assume by the definition of S, this doesn't exist. This means um, none of those the elements in AS uh, has this, uh, are congruent to one the other um, modulo N, which means the modulo n of As is a permutation of S. Now we can just times all the elements on both side, uh, for both side, uh, both sets, and we get this one As1 times As2 all the way to As phi n is congruent to S1 times S2 all the way to S phi n modulo n. And do some uh, simplification, we get a to the degree of phi n times the product of Si is congruent to the product of Si modulo n. And because each Si is co-prime to n, so the product of Si is co-prime to n, so we can get rid of this uh, product. So we finally just get a to the degree of phi n is congruent to 1 modulo n. We didn't, we forgot to mention that um, if n here is a prime number, then phi n by its definition is just n minus 1. Then this uh, theorem itself just become the uh, Fermat's little theorem. So a to the degree of n minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo n. That's why Euler's theorem, or Euler's totient theorem, is a generalization of Fermat's little theorem. Last but not least, we're going to show the calculation of Euler's totient function. So we just, uh, um, the proof goes with the definition, from the definition of this function. Remember, um, phi n is all the um, uh, elements, all the integers between one, uh, in a set of 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1, that is co-prime to n. So let's assume that n only has one prime factor, p1. And then this means that if we want to find everything between 1 and n minus 1 that is co-prime to n, basically we just need to uh, exclude all the multiply of p1. So we can easily get that phi n just equals to n minus n divided by p1. That's the total number of uh, numbers that are a multiply of p1. So this can be simplified just to n times 1 minus 1 over p1. Okay. So this is the uh, right format for uh, the uh, phi n, right? When n only get one prime factor. If n has two prime factors, let's think about it. So if uh, so, what are the uh, numbers that are co-prime to n? Instead of asking that, we say that what are the numbers that are um, um, not co-prime to n, which has a common factor with n, which means those are either the uh, multiply of p1 or the multiply of p2. So if we say uh, phi n just equals to n minus those two, we actually double uh, count uh, the uh, the numbers, the elements that are um, multiply for, of both p1 and p2. So we have to add one back. So eventually we got this, n minus n divided by uh, n over p1 minus n over p2 and plus n over p1 times p2. And then we can uh, factorize this. This is just n times 1 minus 1 over p1 times 1 minus 1 over p2. Okay. So still, uh, this uh, um, aligns with the uh, expression of phi n. Now, if we go further, we're gonna, if n contains m um, distinct uh, unique prime factors p1 p2 all the way to pm okay so here we need to use the uh, inclusion exclusion principle 
So we we can actually, by definition, phi n can be written as n minus n over one of the、uh, prime factors plus n over two of the prime factors, so on and so forth, until minus one to the degree of m, and divide by p1 times p2 all the way to pm. Okay. So this is similar to uh, when uh, n has only、uh, Two prime factors, which is just using the inclusion and exclusion principle. So once we get that,、uh, once we get this one, so it's easy. We just、uh, factor、uh, factor out n, and then if we look at、uh, the everything here, it is just it can be just rewritten as n times one minus one over p1 times one minus one over p2 all the way to one minus one over pm. So if you look at that. Um, we can just use combination to verify that. So there's only one item provides one because you just take one、uh, for each one of the、uh, items. There's only one item provides p one over p one p two all the way to p m because you just take the one over p i out of each item. And then、um, there's、um, So for the first item here, we just take out one over p one from one item, and then one out of the the rest of the items. So we get the first、uh, summation, so on and so forth. So we can get this. So that's why the Euler's totient function looks like this. And that's it for today.